Okay, so um, chapter nine is all about long live last long live assets, and I had mentioned that this is the heavy hitter for this exam. Um, we covered chapter seven, eight, and nine in the exam. Uh, seven was the bank reconciliation. Eight was looking at accounts receivable and notes receivable, some of which was um, new and some of which was uh, partially um, older information or information you've done before at some point in this class. Now we're to chapter nine. In chapter nine, what you're learning in here is a lot of new stuff, a lot of new information, a lot of new calculations, a long process, and um, new entries with new accounts. So, um, you know, be patient with yourself. Everyone has the skills that they need in order to figure this out. So you just have to be very methodical, step by step by step by step, okay? All right, so today we are going to look at determining the cost of a plan asset. We're gonna talk about buying and leasing just very briefly. Um, we are then going to look at accounting for plan assets and that's gonna take us to, take us through the process of figuring out um, depreciation. You're gonna learn how to figure out depreciation, which is kind of a, can be a long process. You really have to pay close attention to details, dates of purchase, uh, dates that you're doing depreciation, dates that the last time depreciation was done. Very important that you're paying very close attention to that. Um, we will um, then, uh, we're not gonna, this analyzing plant assets with the ratios and stuff, we'll look at that really quick, but um, we're not gonna be doing anything with that on the homework or the exam. Um, we will also talk briefly about intangible assets and the presentation on the financial statement. But in today's class, we are going to get all the way up to everything but the um, this second box here. This is accounting for plant assets. We are going to get up to everything except for plant asset disposable. Disposal. Plant asset disposal is going to take up all of our next class session. Okay. All right. So, um, so plant assets, and and you know this. So this is kind of a little bit of a um, reminder. But plant assets are resources that we use to create revenue within our company, okay? So these are things that have physical substance, okay? They could be, if we're a baker, there are bakery ovens. If we are a McDonald's, they're the location that we own and all of the cooking equipment here at um, Los McDonald's College. It is our campus. It is the desk that students sit in, the computers that faculty use. Um, the, the assets are what you use to um, provide your service or your product to your customers. Um, and it is, um, plant assets are often referred to as the PPE, the property, plant, and equipment. And we've talked about that before. And they're expected to have a long, useful life. So um, they're not things like supplies that we're going to use up relatively quickly. These are things that we are going to take the value of the asset and we're going to spread it over its life. So instead of it, uh, charging it to expense, as soon as we buy it, we are going, through, going to go through a process of figuring how long that asset um, is gonna last. And the book is gonna tell you for every problem how long the asset's gonna last. So you don't have to figure that part out. But what you do have to figure out then is how to take the total amount you paid for it and spread that out over the number of years that the um, asset is going to be used. And that is done every month when you do your um, adjusting entries. It's one of the things you do when you do adjusting entries. So I had talked at one part in the class about how uh, when I worked in accounting, I had a folder for every year of the month. So I had one for January, one for February, one for March, one for April, all the way through to the end of the year. And then um, I had a master folder. And in the master folder, I would have copies of things that I had to do every month of the year. So those were like adjusting entry kind of things or counting things I had to do. So an example might be that, let's say that I bought an asset, we'll say I bought a computer and the computer was gonna be depreciated for one year. The life of the computer was um, one year and it was a $12,000 asset. So what I would do when I bought that asset is I would debit equipment, $12,000 and I would credit cash, $12,000. So I now have an asset of $12,000 showing on my book. Well, then the next step I would do is I would figure out what the depreciation is that I'd have to do an entry for every month. And so um, if I took a $12,000 asset and I divided it by 12 months, 
that means that I would use up or I would expense $1,000 of that asset every month. So what I would have done is I would have wrote that up on a piece of paper. I would have made 12 copies of it. I would have put one copy in every folder, January, February, March, April, May. We're going to pretend like I bought it on December 31, okay? I would put one, one copy in every folder. And then in the master folder, I would put it in there. I would put the master paper in there with the date I bought it, the date the depreciation would be done. So every month I would go to that folder at the end of the month after I did all my entries, I did my trial balance. I would then go to do my adjusting entries. I would open up that folder. And in that folder, I would have the source documents that would tell me the adjusting entries I'd have to make. So I would see that adjusting entry for that asset and I would go, oh, okay. So um, I have to do an entry to depreciate this asset $1,000. So what I would do for my depreciation entry is I would debit depreciation expense and I would credit accumulated depreciation equipment. So I would do that every time for, for the life of that asset. So I would get to December 31 and at December 31, if I paid the equipment account, it would still show the $12,000 I paid for it. But right below it, you would see less accumulated depreciation and on December 31, when I did my financial statements, it would show the accumulated depreciation was $12,000. So it would be a $12,000 asset minus $12,000 of accumulated depreciation. So that would mean it had zero book value. It had zero book value left for us. So that's, that's how those two kind of relate together. Then what would happen is in January, when I went to set my files up for the next year, I would open up the folder and I would go, oh, okay, here's this, um, here's this asset, this computer we bought. We were only depreciating it for one year. The last time I was supposed to depreciate it was on December 31. So I'm done with that asset. I could throw that master item away. But let's say that I was depreciating it over five years. Well, then I would make copies of that again and put it in the folders for the next year. And I would do that for the next five years until the asset was fully depreciated. Now, there's a lot of different systems people use to track um, when to do their entries and stuff. Uh, we did it with the actual paper copies because it made it easier for auditors to have an actual adjustment file where they could look at the source documents. And it might even be a copy of the invoice we used to, to purchase the asset and the calculations that showed the life of the asset and then the calculations that showed how much depreciation to do, okay? So depreciation is normally done every month, but um, sometimes in the problems that you're seeing, it might be done monthly, it might be done quarterly, and it might be done annually. So you have to watch the dates really close as far as what the problem is asking you, okay? All right, so if we look at companies, uh, different companies have different levels of assets, uh, point assets in order to do their business, right? So if you think about Microsoft, well, Microsoft sells software and software is not um, a tangible product, right? It is a program that's created. So they have a very um, small amount of assets. But if you look at something like JetBlue Airways, well, how do they provide their service? Well, they're an airline company. So they have to have airplanes in order to provide their service. So 69% of the company's um, um, assets are plant assets. So that's that's a big, big percentage for them. So um, when we look at the cost, um, you're not going to have to worry about this as far as, you know, the, the cost, well, the cost, you will, you will need to know part of this, actually, um, how to figure out the cost of an asset. A cost is uh, the cash you paid for it or the equivalent cash that you paid for it and all of the items that are included in the cost of the asset. So these would be things like taxes and broker's fees and things like that. So part of this you're gonna learn is how to figure out the cost of an asset. And we're gonna go over and look at that. Um, you don't have to worry about the cash equivalent price piece. That's, that's not something we're gonna be working with at all in here, okay? So what you're gonna be learning is how to figure out the cost of an asset. So we're gonna go down here um, okay, revenue and capital expenditures. So revenue expenditures are the cost that we get when we acquire the asset, okay? And that's something that we might be expensing immediately. Um, and then capital expenditures are costs that are incurred um, to get the plant asset that go into the plant asset account. You're not gonna have any problems that actually refer to those terms. So you're not going to have to worry about those. They're not going to be like tested on the exam or anything like that. That's just kind of the formal definition um, of those two. Um, 
Okay, so let's go to the next slide. All right, now, um, this is this stuff I'm talking about right now is not related to that map that I showed you. That is figuring out depreciation. Right now, we're just getting to figuring out the cost, okay? And you will have a problem on the exam where you have to figure out the cost of an asset. And it's a problem where you either get the cost right or you get the cost wrong. There's no partial credit if you have like one item missing. I mean, you either have to get it wrong or get it right, okay? So um, the cost of land, so it could be land, it could be equipment, it could be buildings as far as what you're, what you're figuring out the cost for, okay? So the cost of land includes all necessary costs in order to make the land ready for its intended use, um, including what it costs to purchase that land, okay? So, and this is all debited to the land account. So the first thing is the cost of um, the land. So the cash purchase price that you paid for it is included. Also included in that are all closing costs, such as any title fees or attorney's fees. Also included in that are any real estate broker commissions. And then if the lien has any accrued property taxes or other liens, that the purchaser is assuming. And I don't think you're gonna get any problems that have any liens or anything like that to deal with, but that is a part of the purchase price, okay? So it, the purchase price of land includes the cash you paid for it, any closing costs, including title fees and attorney fees, any real estate broker commission, any property taxes, okay? All right, so let's go to the next slide. So here's going to be an example. Um, and I believe this is in our book. Uh, and I'm telling you this because I think um, once I change the slide, you're not going to see it. And then it's going to go away. So I'll tell you. What page? I think it's in our book. Uh, da, 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 da. Maybe it's uh, let's see, land illustration. I looked at this ahead of time, huh? Um, actually, you know what? I don't, I don't think it is. Any, oh, it is. Okay. So it's on page 9-4. So it says, assume that Hayes Company acquires real estate at a cash cost of $100,000. The property contains an old warehouse that is demolished at a net cost of $6,000. So what that means is that, it, and they, they're showing in parentheses here, it was $7,500 in cost to um, tear the building down, less $1,500 in proceeds from salvaged materials. So they went through what they knocked down and they sold all the aluminum and the copper and things like that. So the actual cost to tear down the building was $6,000. Additional expenditures are attorney's fees of $1,000 and the real estate broker fee of $8,000, okay? So they're asking us to determine the cost of the land. So if we go to the next slide, and this is seen on page 9-4 in your text, uh, the cash price of the property is $100,000. The net removal cost of the warehouse is $6,000. The attorney fees is $1,000 and the real estate broker's commission is $8,000. So the total cost of the land is $115,000. So on your exam, you're gonna get a problem where it's gonna have a box and they're gonna ask you for that last item there in red, the, the total cost of the land, okay? You're not gonna list out the items, you're gonna to have to do that on scratch paper, so you wanna make sure you double check your math on that, okay? So that would be the total cost of the land. And then, um, Land improvements are things that are not part of the cost of the land. And you're gonna to wanna to make a list of these because these are not part of the cost of the land and they should not be included in the land price, right? Um, these are things such as driveways, parking lots, fences, landscaping, um, underground sprinklers, um, things like that, that they have limited use, limited life. So they're gonna to have to be redone at some point. Okay. 
make a list of that driveways, parking lots, fences, landscaping, underground sprinklers. And this is in your book to um, on the bottom of page nine four. Okay. So buildings. So buildings is similar to land, but there's a couple couple different things in there. So um, the cost of a building includes the purchase price, any closing costs, such as attorney's fees, title insurance, brokers, fees, or um, real estate broker fees, or commissions, any remodeling. So for instance, if um, near the Los Madonna's College campus, there's a um, Wendy's. Let's say you bought the Wendy's and you're like, okay, I'm gonna make it a McDonald's. Well, in order to make a McDonald's there, you have to actually, according to franchise rules, you have to actually remodel that building to make it look like a McDonald's. So that would be part of the purchase price because you'd have to do that before you could use that for your business. Uh, replacing or repairing the roof, floors, electrical, wiring, and plumbing. Now, this doesn't mean like down the line. This means when you're buying, when you're buying it, you know, if you have to replace the roof before you can move in or something. Okay. And this is on page nine five in our textbook. Um, so there's also costs that can be related to the building um, that may be outside of just the general purchase, like I was saying. So it could be um, for things that you have to do construction wise. So it could be those remodeling costs, right? So it could be um, the contract price for the remodeling, uh, payment for architectural fees, any kind of building permits that you have to pay for in order to get permission for the changes, any kind of excavation costs that are associated with it. Those will all be part of the cost of the building. Um, equipment. Now equipment, very similar, a uh, little bit of differences though in some places. So um, it is the cash purchase price that you'll pay for the equipment. It includes the sales tax. It includes any freight charges to get the equipment to you. And for some things that could be very, very expensive. If you're buying like a full assembly line equipment, that could be very expensive. Um, insurance during transit that's paid by the purchaser. So if you are shipping something cross country or from another part of the world, you're often gonna pay insurance on that. And then any expenses for assembling the equipment, installing the equipment and testing the equipment. So a lot of times if you buy really um, expensive, high grade equipment, um, you're going to have the company come out and they're gonna install it and assemble it and they're gonna do the testing. And sometimes it's included in the price and sometimes you pay additional for that. So that would be part of the cost as well, okay? All right, so this is gonna give us a, um, example of a truck and this is on page nine five in our text and it says leonard company purchases a delivery truck at a cash purchase price of twenty two thousand dollars related expenditures are sales tax of one thousand three hundred twenty dollars painting and lettering of five hundred dollars motor vehicle license of eighty dollars and a three-year accident insurance policy of sixteen hundred dollars Compute the cost of the delivery truck. And you're gonna notice that not everything is listed there. So the cash price is listed, 22,000. The sales tax is listed, 1,320. The painting and lettering is listed because that is getting the truck ready to use in your business, $500. And that's it. That's the total cost of 23,820. Now, the $80 vehicle license you have to pay that every year. So it's not a, a cost of the purchase. It is a regular cost you have to pay every year for that vehicle. And the three-year accident policy, that's not part of the cost either. That is something that you're going to use up every over the next three years. And then three years from now, you'll have to purchase another insurance policy, okay? So those two items are not included in the cost of the vehicle. All right, uh, let's see, and that is on the page, um, on page nine five, and then they're actually going to show you how to do the entries here, and that's on the bottom of nine five. So what you're going to do is you're gonna debit equipment for the cost, right? Which was the purchase price of 22,000, 
the um, taxes of 1320 and the lettering of 500. Okay. Then you're going to debit licensing expense for $80. And then you're going to debit prepaid insurance for $1,600. And you're going to credit cash for the total of all of that because you are paying all of that out for $25,500. So I'm gonna stop there at that point and then we are going to uh, do a problem to kind of put this to practice.